Hi there, welcome to TD Cat Tech and today's goods in. Today we're looking at the Sanjin 8 ATS 909X. Well, what is this? Well, if you're on this video, you probably know what this is. This is a, um, it's, it's just a radio, really. It's a world band radio. Yeah, these things still exist in 2019. And uh, just a few things before I start. This isn't going to be a short video, by the way. I'm going to take my time over this. So if you're after a really short and to the point video, then maybe you might want to tune in to something else. It's up to you. Anyway, I know what some of you might be thinking. Why on earth do you need something like this today? Because you've got like access to so much media out there with internet radio and just online stuff. But with, if you're into radio, you will know that receiving something, like actually receiving something over the air or transmitting something and achieving a certain distance or getting a, you know, getting that kind of long distance kind of transmission on radio is just really satisfying. And there's nothing like, quite like it. And as a result, there will be some people who still want the real thing. They still want an actual radio. They still want to tune in and receive those broadcasts on shortwave, those kind of um, upper and lower sideband broadcasts of, uh, of ham radios across the world, potentially, and, uh, and also just a, a decent FM long wave, medium wave radio. Now, of course, there's less and less stuff used. You know, FM's being used less and less now, and long wave and particularly is being used less and less, but it is still in use. And I've kind of always just wanted just a decent, nice radio. And this is the one that I chose. So let's take a look in the box and see what you get. I went for the white one. The reason I went for the white one is because it was about £20 cheaper. And, um, and also because I just thought all my tech's black. It's so boring. I thought I'm going to go for something grey white for a change instead. I hope it's not too horrible. Let's have a look and see what we get in here. I've never opened this before. Oh, that squeaks. That's oh, don't like that. Right. So in the front we have. Well, let's just take out here. We have a uh, power pack, and this is a non-switch mode power pack by the look of things, which is good news. Uh, interesting that that comes with an EU power pack, seeing as I'm in the UK. I'm probably going to need an adapter for that, aren't I? Marvellous. Have they actually provide that? No, so I'm going <laughs> to need an adapter for that. Okay, well, <laughs> no problem. I'm sure I can sort something out. Uh, but this is a non-switch mode power supply because uh, the idea is, I think, that uh, it provides a lot less interference down the line to the radio, uh, uh, which of course could cause a problem with uh, shortwave and you know AM, AM transmissions. Uh, I, oh, again, and just another thing to comment on. I'm re I feel really underqualified to unbox something like this. You know, I'm no I'm no kind of expert in in the area of kind of shortwave transmissions and sidebands and single sideband transmissions and all that sort of thing. I, I I'm just sort of like trying this out and seeing how you know how seeing whether this is of any interest to me yeah i just there are lots more other unboxing videos where they go into much more detail about the product and how it works and so you know you probably want to take a look at those too but what i can give you is a nice look at the product so there's the uh, there's the manual that's a decent uh, thickness manual but we've got multiple languages there by the look of things and then we have our radio, which is in this nice case. It actually looks like it's a, a semi-okay one. I said in a previous Goods In video that I really don't like these things a lot of the time. And I don't, but this feels like it's, you know, it's sort of pseudo leather. So it's not, it's not that horrible, um, I don't know, like almost like foam type material. That's a kind of, it's a sort of pseudo leather case, which feels nice, feels decent. I doubt it's leather. Let me have a sniff. Hang on. No, that's definitely not leather. <laughs> Be nice if it was. Uh, and let's open that up and see. Let's take a look at the radio itself. And there we go. There's the actual radio. Looking good. I'll uh, take a little bit more of a look at that in a second once I've taken everything else out of the box. 
and we get our external shortwave real antenna, uh, which from what I've read online makes quite a big difference. Uh, makes the reception much, much better, which you would make sense. I mean, that's probably why they provide the bloody thing, isn't it? And some headphones as well. Oh, interesting. Wow. I mean, I'm a, I was quite surprised that they still make these things. But there's still a group of people out there that are, are, are interested, me included. You know, I, I love this sort of stuff. I love, I just love radio in general. I always have. And uh, yeah, so you're either a into that kind of thing or you're not. And if you are into that sort of thing, you'll understand what I mean when I say receiving that real transmission from someone is just so much better than just tuning into a station online. Anyone can do that. That's not the point at all. By the wonderful magic of editing, we're now 24 hours later. I was kind of going along with this uh, uh, unboxing and uh, first look, I guess, first impressions. And I just suddenly realized that I'm massively underqualified. There's a lot going on here on this. <laughs> and um, having not used it and literally just taken it out of the box, I'm not familiar with these type of radios. This is, a, this is kind of me sort of dipping my toes in, so to speak. Uh, I've just sort of thought, this isn't gonna be helpful for anybody. So anyway, I'm 24 hours down the line now. And I want to just do a look around the radio and try and describe some of the stuff that I've discovered over the last 24 hours, some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like. So um, thanks for sticking with me. And I do apologize if I get any of this wrong. As I say, I'm new to this, so bear with me. Firstly, let's take a, uh, a look around the radio. Let's take a look at sort of up close and personal on this radio. I'll probably leave this video in 4K actually, so we can get some really nice crisp lovely detail on this. Uh, so firstly, let's take a look down the left hand side of the radio here. Uh, lots of stuff still across the whole uh, interface. The whole radio is full of bits and pieces. So here we have our AM external antenna. This uh, radio comes with a real antenna for shortwave, uh, which you know, you can extend out and will provide better performance than the uh, the whip, this kind of sort of telescopic whip antenna that's on it that attaches there. We also have an auxiliary in where you can attach like an MP3 player or, uh, you know, your phone or something like that. I don't know. I don't really see the point of this. Actually, I don't see why you would use this as an amp. You'd, if you're going to connect music from your phone, you're going to have better options to do it than uh, connecting via this radio, I would have thought. Here we have a, a record standby and line out. This allows you to connect the unit to an external recorder. Sanjin make their own external recorders, which means you can set timers on the device and automatically record at certain times. So this sort of interfaces with that. Here we have our standard earphone socket. This is a stereo output. So... Um, if you do want to feed the unit out into a recorder somewhere or into another device, you can do it there. You can probably do it there as well, I imagine. Here's our AC in, 9 volts. Of course, this unit comes, as I said earlier, this one comes with a um, non-switch mode power supply to keep the input clean. And there is our RF gain um, rotary dial. This is just an analog rotary dial to uh, remove kind of noise on AM, I suppose. Um, I think if you're going to be tuning this, you want to keep that set to max for most of the time. And that on-off switch there just enables the auxiliary in. It kind of disables the radio functions and enables the auxiliary in. Let's just take a quick look at the bottom of the radio now. Not much on the bottom, just a reset switch and um, some data in switches. I don't think this would be uh, any use to anyone but, uh, but factory. So uh, this really is just the reset button on there. Just a word, I've noticed that uh, over the last day, this, this radio has reset on me randomly three times. And I, have, I didn't have the battery switch set to the correct type of batteries, which I thought was only for charging. But since I've made the switch to the right type of batteries, it hasn't reset on me once. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if it's just a bit of buggy software or something. Not too sure, but I hope it doesn't continue to do that. All right, let's take a look at the right-hand side of the radio now. We have the wide and narrow AM switch. Usually you'd probably use that in wide. That makes no, has no effect on um, sideband. This is really just for standard kind of um, carrier frequency reception, I suppose, and for want of a better term. And then we have stereo and mono FM. 
There is a tone control here for news, norm, and music. I find the music just puts this into a slightly kind of um, higher top end, higher low end, and um, a bit less mid-range. I personally find, on the radio audio at least, on the speaker on the radio, I personally find that norm is by far the best option. Then we have the time set, which can be set to manual or auto, because of course some stations will send through time information with them. And this gives you the option to um, allow the radio to set its time automatically. We have our volume control here, nice analog volume control. This is actually one of my favorite buttons on the radio so far. I just find this really nice, just to tweak it, tweak up and down a little bit. It's nice and smooth, no noise on it. Just, just a nice, nice little volume control there. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, the top of the radio. Yes, so we have our... That's upside down. What am I doing? On the right-hand side, on the top of the radio, we have timer set for... Is that sleep timer? I think that's sleep timer. I'm not absolutely sure about that one, actually. This is daytime, uh, daylight savings time set, and this is our world home clock switch. And then, if I just zoom out a little bit on the radio to get the full thing into shot like this. Then we have our telescopic whip antenna on top, which does retract. It's a little bit of play on it, um, but if you, if you notice, look, that retracts in here. And that really just means that you can rotate the whip antenna. You can have the radio flat on the surface like that, but you can still have this antenna going upright, which is, um, which is what you need with a radio like this. One thing I have noticed through research into these sort of things is that because they're so specialist now, these type of radios, you know, the type of people who use these are very discerning. They're very, they know exactly what they need to get the job done. And as such, when somebody, a company like Sanjin makes a mistake on a radio like this, when they sort of don't add the things that are necessary to do the job, the public will speak up and say, well, this radio is great because of that, but it's not great because it hasn't got a tiny little button here to do this or whatever. So whether these things, you know, I don't know what all those things are yet, so I can't really comment on those. I'm commenting on this as a newbie, someone new to this, uh, and uh, so this is just really my genuine first impressions. All right, moving around to the back. Thank you for bearing with me. I, don't, I know these are, because this is, potentially going to be quite a long video. Moving around to the back, we have the flip-out stand, which contains just clock information. You always seem to get this on these type of radios, don't you? And one nice little, nice little extra touch here is the two rubber feet down the bottom here. Don't have them on the top, uh, which I might have liked, actually. I might have liked some just two, two extra rubber feet here, so when you put it down flat rather than on the stand, it uh, also has rubber feet, but it does have these two rubber feet here. So when you have it, when you have the stand flipped out and you have the radio on the stand, these two feet grip nicely to the surface that you are on, which is just a nice thing to make it, you know, it uh, helps use the radio. And we have our four AA batteries in there. There's no kind of tag to let you put under the batteries, if you know what I mean, to let you quickly pull them out. You really have to get your finger in here. And, um, and do it that way, which is a pain. I wish they'd put some sort of tag under there. And then we have our AM step switch in here. Let me just uh, zoom in closely on, the, um, on, this, on this little area. We have our AM switch step between nine kilohertz and 10 kilohertz. And then we have our switch between NICAD and alkaline batteries there as well. I hope you can see that. Oh, there's also, <clears throat> there's also no foam in here. You, you could easily fit some yourself, but there should have been some sort of foam added to this to stop this being quite so... You can tell it's a little bit plasticky and it does tend to rattle just a little bit. So uh, that's a shame. Little, little things, little touches like that make a big difference. All right, so now round to the most important part and undoubtedly the most interesting part the front of the radio. First of all, let me just extend the antenna. I'm going to put this on, I don't want to really get any kind of copyright matches here. So I'm going to have to be careful about how much I play of anything. But I'm going to turn it on now. Uh, I've got the key lock on there. So I just turn it on. And first of all, we have down the left hand side here are four bands, FM, long wave, medium wave and short wave. And FM long wave and medium wave have auto-tuning search. I think that's what ATS stands for. 
which allows the, the radio to just scan through and automatically program the stations in to sort of relevant presets, I think, and just, you know, allow them then all to be searchable just straight away by presets. So you have those on those four band, on those three bands, but shortwave doesn't have that facility. Um, it's probably a good idea. I don't really, you need presets with shortwave, but the thing is the, the stations come and go so much across the different bands and across the different times of the day that keeping track of presets, I don't know how people do it. I just think, you know, it's going to be really hard to do that sort of thing. So I, I don't see how an ATS function would really, it wouldn't serve much purpose on shortwave, in my opinion anyway. Other people may, people may have a different opinion on that. And um, then we have the keypad entry. So this looks really nice, you know, it looks kind of quite complicated and stuff. The buttons are really nice to press, very gentle press on them, which is, isn't the problem because you have a key lock here. So you can lock the, all these buttons out so that it doesn't do anything. But, um, but they're really nice to press. So, you know, if I wanted to enter that frequency, I would just press F here and then just do uh, 19.595, enter. And there we go. It's just as uh, simple as that to enter a frequency. But they're very light touch, so you don't have to be kind of pushing them down uh, to get uh, the frequency entered. Three timers, as mentioned, these timers relate to the uh, alarm, so I think into the recording. You can go directly access your shortwave uh, meter, so the, your shortwave bands, by pressing the shortwave button and then pressing one of these. So if we wanted to jump straight to the 40, let me just zoom in a little bit more closely on this keypad here so you can see this nice and clearly. Uh, if we wanted to jump to the 41 meter band, I would just press shortwave and then press 41 meter. And then immediately you can see in the display, if we move just up to there, you can see that it's entered the uh, 41 meter band. And now if I press the tuning buttons, if I actually sort of uh, auto scan, the radio will scan within that meter band and it will rotate round. And that's the only time that it does cyclical or cyclical scanning is, um, oh, what's going on with my focus? It's the only time it does cyclical scanning is when it is within a meter band. If you take it outside a meter band and start tuning, it will then just carry on up and just start scanning the whole lot. But within a meter band, it'll just keep rotating round and round. So I can probably demonstrate that to you now. I don't know how big the 41 is, 41 meter band is, but uh, if I just have a, have a look at that, I don't think it's gonna find it. Oh, there we go, okay, so it's already gone round. Yeah, so it'll just keep doing that until you stop it. Presets are done through pages. There are how many pages? You can see just up here in the display, this green section tells you what page you're on. So as you press page here, you can scroll up through all your different pages of presets and there are 39, I think, yes, 39. And each of those pages can be named. You can name them to, to whatever you want as you can your presets as well within those pages. So you can see this one here, I don't know what that stands for, DW. Um, what, like Deutsche Welt or something? I, don't, I really don't know. Uh, page, so let's just go down to page, I can scroll down to page one, press enter, and then I'm now on my page one of presets, and I can see that the radio's actually got eight things, oh, sorry, nine things already tuned in on this by default. So these, these, um, Nothing that I'm getting at the moment, however, during the day. There was, something, was there something down here? No, nothing. So nothing down there at the moment, but you get the idea anyway. So you have a page of presets and you can just um, set those to whatever you want. All right, moving on. The single sideband functionality is great. Uh, it allows you 40 hertz. Once you enter into upper sideband or lower sideband, you are uh, allowed 40 hertz variations on the uh, step. So the, the, the tuning step is 40 hertz then, rather than you know your standard. So that's currently set to fast tuning mode. In this rotation here, you can see it says fast. If I change that to, if I press step and change it to slow, then I only move up. What's that? 100 kilohertz? Is that right? 100 kilohertz, yeah, I think. 100 kilohertz, 500 kilohertz. And then if I switch to sideband, 
and I've got really, really fine control. So I can't give you a good example of that at the moment because I'm not picking up anything. <laughs> but um, that's true for the shortwave band. And then the FM stuff is, uh, as you would expect, you know, FM here we have everything from, in, the, in Europe we have everything from 76 megahertz on this radio. So I can go right down to 76 megahertz. Not that there's anything on 76. First thing I should hit, theoretically, is BBC... Oh, don't know what that is. First thing I should hit is BBC Radio 2, up around 88-ish, I would have thought. BBC Radio 2, there we go. And once you're on a, an FM station, this SSB switch also performs different functions, so it doesn't, doesn't do anything on, on FM, but as soon as you press that, you then function through your different RDS information. So you can see in the display there down the bottom that as I'm, you know, I've got my now playing section, we've got the name of the station, and we've got the type of music. So just standard RDS functions, been around for years, nothing special there, but that's how you access those. You can edit the name of the page that you're on. So if I'm on shortwave here and I've got DW there, um, if I'm on page one, I can edit the name of that page just by pressing edit and I can scroll through and enter letters that way or I can just enter something on the display here. We also have a squelch function which operates on pretty much any, I think it operates on all the bands and you just set that squelch to a particular signal level, the threshold level for the squelch. So if I'm on 6095 here, 6.095, I can press squelch and I can move that up to whatever level of signal I want it to, um, to cut out at. So right up to the squelch level of 12. I thought it was a signal thing actually, but it looks like it's just its independent level. Yeah, I thought it was related to signal, but uh, no, that goes up to 12 and the signal goes up to 10. Either way, you get what it does and you can do that on FM, you can do it on long wave, you do whatever you want. And backlit display, doesn't make much difference in the day here and under my lighting, but you can see this backlit display is really nice. It's very even, very clear. I, I love these type of displays. Give me a good LCD display over uh, some kind of screen any day. And the only reason I say that is because battery life is massively extended on this type of display. If you don't need uh, a you don't need a screen. Don't just put one on there for the sake of it. In fact, if a, with something like this, I imagine it would just cause all endless kinds of interference. It'd be crazy. But um, yeah, they've seemed, done a good job with the display on this, I think. It just looks really good. I can't get it looking, I can't do it justice on this camera shot because of the, um, of the lights and things like that. But if it can just give you an idea there, you know, you can see how clear and crisp it is. If I, yeah, diff difficult for me to really show you. But it gives you all the information you want. You can see very simply you know, how stuff's set up. And The only thing there isn't on this radio is any kind of volume. You can't see where you're at with your volume. It'd be nice if you could actually see that somewhere on the display. You know, as I turn it up, there's like volume one or two or three here, but there's no indication of where the volume's at at all. It doesn't matter too much because you can just turn it down or turn it up, but it, that would be nice to have. The only other thing I would say that I've noticed so far that I don't like about the radio is this down here. This rotary tuning knob um, button requires all sorts of weird forces to use. You have to kind of press down in order to get enough grip on this to be able to turn it round. And, and you end up thinking, oh, the only way I can do this is by using two fingers like that, but then you can't really whiz round it. It doesn't, it doesn't flow as easily as it needs to. This needs to be free, free wheeling, if you like, so no sort of notches as you're going along. But as it is, you have to kind of press and move this way at the same time, and it's not very... It just doesn't feel right to use. Um, if this was kind of, if this was duplicated, like on the side here or something, as an actual kind of button, just a uh, an, a bigger button like the like the volume thing here, then that would be perfect. But as it stands, this on the front is just a, 
it's a bit clumsy to use. And considering that's like a major part of the radio, you know, tuning in a radio is kind of quite key, really. That's a shame that that's been sort of just hasn't been implemented that well. Uh, it's that's feedback I've seen on other videos as well relating to this radio. And I was thinking, oh, it's probably not that bad. And it is pretty clumsy to use. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I can still hold the side here and I can whiz up through this, but it's just that force of having to push down and kind of push up is weird because you're then pushing almost against the mechanism. Anyway, you get what I mean, hopefully. And enough of that. Well, I'll stop talking about that now. Uh, the only other buttons really here are this one, this priority button. I think that's a, quite a nice little feature, just being able to have one station as your this is my button to go to. You know, if I press this, no matter what happens, I jump straight to this station, straight to this band, straight to this station, and I can hear it immediately. And that's a, um, a nice feature. In summary then, <laughs> the, this radio so far it, it seems to be pretty good. It, it's, um, it's pretty nicely made. It's a little bit plasticky around the back and sides. The front is really good. The quality of the speaker is better than I expected it to be. I don't really mind too much about that for a small portable radio like this. You know, I don't mind, I'm not after like hi-fi quality or anything. As long as the speech side of it is audible, then, uh, then I'm happy. I'm, I went for the white version, as I mentioned, and I like it. Yeah, I think it looks good. Uh, and this is a bit of a letdown, this tuning control. This needs to be improved on, and it'd be great if they update this version, if they're going to update this radio at all. I don't know whether they put any research into these kind of things now. This sort of product must be so niche, so specialist, that I wouldn't have thought they would release many of these. But if they do update this, I would really like to see a better way of doing this, either completely smooth or... I, I really don't know. You need two options, maybe one on the side, one on the back, uh, one on the front. But it looks the part, but it doesn't work as well as it might you might think by looking at it. I used to have a Sony tuner, uh, just a standard radio, you know, a sort of um, separate kind of uh, tuner, and it had a beautiful, really weighted tuning button on it. And, you know, you could just, just go like this on it and it would just carry on spinning because it was so weighted. And something like that, and it was completely free spinning, something like that on this, just a bit more weighted, a bit more sort of build quality around the tuning button would be perfect. These buttons are fantastic. They're, they are exactly what I would want on a radio like this. Easy to press, lockable, simple to enter, very clear, not rubber so they won't get all garbage, like crappy after a while. Uh, the display, very clear, nice, gives you all the information you need. Backlight is really nice. Uh, functionality around input and output is good. Uh, overall, I'm impressed. I mean, it's it's a nice, a really nice portable radio. Uh, it, it costs about £200, so you'd expect it to be a reasonably nice radio for that. But um, it is fairly specialist, so I think they can probably add a bit to the money, uh, to the price, because of that. So, thank you very much for watching. I realise this has been a very long video, but I think, you know, if you are interested in this kind of thing, you might want you might be welcome firstly a newcomer's look at this and that's me and secondly a really sort of fairly detailed or sorry, really detailed fairly detailed look around the product so hopefully that's i've given managed to give you something like that today thanks very much for watching please do put in the comments anything that you can offer you could send me some frequencies to use to tune in because i could really do with some in the uk some decent stuff i managed to pick up a load of good stuff last night though um, and in answer to the question, is listening to shortwave dead, or DXing, I think as it's known, is listening to shortwave dead? Absolutely not. There is loads of stuff out there, and the idea of listening to a real broadcast from somewhere, not on the internet, just actually over the air from like a completely different part of the world, is just is just fascinates me. It's, it's amazing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Thank you.